the attraction of creating new realities, especially by means of staging, of suggestion and simulation, and thereby replacing given realities, has taken on a new dimension through the digital revolution. With the help of digital technology, electronic media and networking technology, it has become possible to produce almost all areas of reality in a new and different way. That is the active version or to participate in such produced realities, that is the passive version. Therefore, and this is my thesis, there is a new basic striving of the many, the ego-oriented social character. I will describe it with Fromm's methods in the following. How did this new social character come about? The ego orientation would be unimaginable without the digital revolution. Digitalization, electronic media and networking technologies have led to revolutionary changes in the mode of production, in the organization of work, of social life and of culture. From a psychological perspective, these changes can be understood as delimitation, that is, as the real or virtual elimination of boundaries, such as natural requirements, as social standards, or as bonds and ties, and so on, which were previously regarded as insurmountable, as, so to speak, the human condition. Examples of the dynamic or delimitation triggered by the digital revolution are the delimitation of space and time, the transfer of knowledge and information in a matter of seconds, diagnostic possibilities through imaging methods, completely new measuring procedures, decoding a genetic, the genetic codes, or mobilization, globalization and flexibilization of almost all production processes. The acceleration of production, communication and decision-making process. In the world of work, for example, the possibilities of delimitation have also led to demands for delimitation, the abolition of social security systems and the establishment of work for which the individual is responsible, that what we call self-enterprise. In an internalized form, the possibilities of delimitation and the demands for delimitation lead to one's own desire to also delimit everything. In other words, to a self-determined striving for delimitation. The definition from there is the ego-oriented person wants to create reality which surrounds him and which he is himself, either in a new and different way, self-determined and without regard for guidelines and requirements, that is the active person, or to have a self-determined share in such a produced reality, that would be the passive version. 
the passive ego-oriented person chooses the life world, the lifestyle, the brand, the music style and the events that suit him or her. Accordingly, the appearance and the eye experience of the active ego-oriented person differ from those of the passive ego-oriented person. The active ego-oriented person wants to be I by reinventing reality and his self. His I experience, therefore, depends on the experience of his creativity. While the I experience of the passive ego-oriented person depends on the fact that he is connected, that is, depends on an experience of the we. This is the reason why ego-oriented people do not want to be bound, but to be connected, and why relationships are preferably designed as being connected without being bound. So delimitation and unboundedness are the crucial points in this ego-oriented character orientation. The following character traits distinguish the ego-oriented person. The ego-oriented is creative. The desire to be creative, to manage and make everything new in the active person or the preference for everything new and newly made. That's it in the passive version. The ego-oriented is emotional. Everything, including one's own self, is emotionalized and one shows emotional strength in the active version. Or the willingness to join in the feeling offered by the media which creates a sort of sentimentality. The ego-oriented is sociable. Relationships are maintained as contexts without committing oneself. The desire for relationships, which could result in obligations or even in a lasting desire for closeness, is taboo. E the ego-oriented is event-hungry. Everything is turned into an event, including one's own self in the active form. Or one likes to be stimulated and consume offers of events in the passive version. And finally, the ego-oriented is open and tolerant. Everything new and different is attractive and tolerated. One is intolerant of what clings to the past and indifferent to everything that does not sweet one. And the last point, the Igorian is venturesome, the striving for the removal of boundaries is also expressed in the fascination for everything risky, borderline, borderless, unconventional, or impossible. Let us ask about the psychodynamics of this character formation. The basic striving to construct reality in a self-determined way, new and different way, proves to be problematic when one's own mental personality is to be reinvented as well. Obviously, it is precisely the release from one's own mental structural formations that is attractive. Who would not want to be always friendly, cooperative, fair, appreciative, achievement-oriented and particularly always motivated? to hear only praise and no complaints, to know no negative feelings such as inferiority, powerlessness or fear, or be neither cheerless 
nor envious. Such a reconstruction of the personality is possible only if the cognitive, emotional and imaginative own powers are largely deactivated and replaced by inacted and particularly by simulated personality attributes. In this way, however, we live less and less from our own mental powers and more and more from being animated and made interested in a variety of things, stimulating feelings or feeling along with emotional offers. Being more and more medially contacted, connected, because we feel less and less the emotional attachments which connect us internally. Finding more and more new rules of living together because we don't want to be fixed or any inner, to any inner racial relief as uh, by a conscience or a superego. With the deactivation of the psychic impulses, the powerful is sought in the generated realities and media outside of the person. And this leads to an increased external orientation and mostly unconscious external heteronomy. In the case of ego-oriented people, this results in an increased symbiosis with digital technology and electronic media and a corresponding existential dependency, which, however, given the feeling of being in control, is not experienced as such. Nevertheless, it is a matter of fact that the experience of cognitive and emotional competence is increasingly only possible in combination with a more powerful technology. Here too, let us ask more precisely which strivings and values are demanded in society and promoted and which are to be repressed where possible in order to identify the objectives for transformation in this way. Now, being innovative and creative is what we should think and should leave, and therefore it is a key for the future, regardless of limitations. Everything is possible. Enough is never enough. Limits and bonds are there to be removed. Everyone has a right to be ruthless, free and self-determined, to be unbound, but always connected. To be connected makes us free, Jeremy Rifkin said 20 years ago. Control contacts in a self-determined way, but do not get attached. You should reinvent yourself and your feelings without weaknesses and always positive. To animate and to make oneself an event is better received and a simulated personality is more convincing. In order to find out what impedes the biophilic growth tendency and a transformation in the narcissistic character, attention has to be directed to what is being repressed. The feeling of being dependent on someone or something has to be repressed, or of being in needs of others is avoided, or, for example, at work also repressed. 
In the family, but also in the professional sphere, there are no duties and obligations, but rather self-determined and self-controlled projects. It is a completely unbearable thought that you could be at the disposal of others, which is why relationships are preferably formed via controllable electronic media. To be hampered in one's career by spouses or children in need of commitment is very unbearable and should be repressed. Bodily limits are counteracted with fitness. Mental limits in the form of inhibitions, compulsions, fears, depressions or aggressions are eliminated with techniques of suggestion or medication. States of passivity and listlessness, boredom or lack of imagination where one simply cannot do anything with oneself and others are mostly avoided in advance by consuming events cultural offers, animations, entertainment programs, emotional experiences. From a psychodynamic perspective, the forced deactivation of growth powers in the ego orientation causes the innate tendency to form a strong and productive ego through one's own thinking, own feeling and own fantasizing to be impeded. The result is an unconscious ego weakness and corresponding, while usually mask, feelings of powerlessness, which are kept in repression by the increased use of digital technology. Transformation aimed at strengthening the biophilic potentials of the individuals concerned should certainly do one thing, use the fantastic possibilities of digital technology, but not leave out the other that is increasingly promote the activation and practice of one's own mental powers. How strong the biophilic powers still are with ego-oriented people can be determined relatively simple, simply by the following deprivation experiment. Individuals who can still do anything or something with themselves and with others during a weekend without electricity and also without battery electricity, that is, without being connected medially, the own productive powers of those individuals have not been damaged. To come back to what was said at the beginning of this part. Any kind of transformation, whether in counseling, in therapy or organizational restructuring, should always aim on the one hand to identify the counterproductive strivings in the individual social character orientations and to reduce their strengths. And on the other hand, to create structural conditions which enable the repressed productive forces of growth, the own powers to think, to feel and to act, to be experienced and practiced again.